everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion on crafting an outstanding career journey from student to product manager. I'm Ravi Padiki, your moderator for the panel discussion. So let's have the speakers on stage too, please. Yeah. Okay, we're waiting for one more speaker to join. Okay. Um, while he is uh, being pushed to the main stage, let me uh, continue. As young men and women, boys and girls, you must have admired certain products or services or disliked some too. You may even have an idea or two to make things better. Have you wondered how you can take that idea further to execution? How do you deal with hundreds of ideas? What do you build? What do you ignore? And who decides in all these matters in an organization? We have 60 minutes of talk time with an amazing panel. The structure of the discussion is going to be in three parts. We'll start with a quick introduction to product management and why should we be so excited about it. The second part, we will talk about how you can get into product management or how you can break into product management. And the third part, we will talk about how does a career path in product management look like? We will spend 20 minutes each. Each of our panelists bring diverse experiences, and it will be fascinating to hear different views on this topic. So I'm going to kick off with my first question to the panelists. And that is going to be, if I may request each of the panelists to start with your name and your title, and who do you work for, and what do you do? And uh, if I can also pack in uh, another question along with that, along with a quick one-liner of introduction, how would you describe what is product management for our student audience? So a uh, quick one-liner introduction of yourself and what do you do and which company you work for? And how would you describe, what is your definition of product management? Um, may I begin with um, uh, Priya? Sure. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, so my name, I'm Priya Subramani, and I lead the product uh, for Walmart. So I'm, I'm senior director for the customer facing products at Walmart for the US e commerce and omni channel business. Um, so, the question about you know, what is product management? To me, it's really about uh, really building uh, features, building solutions for, and for, for customers, something that people will enjoy using, something that helps uh, add value to their lives. So, there's really, it's about really solving problems. Uh, making things better for customers. Awesome. Great. How about you, Manju? Manjunath, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, this is Manjunath. I'm a part of Flipkart, uh, lead product and engineering for a couple of areas, including grocery, growth hacking, and category experiences. <laughs> the, my definition of product management is fairly similar to what Priya said. Uh, it's about uh, creating products that uh, add value to customers. And uh, when you uh, think about creating it, it also comes with uh, ownership on analyzing what is needed uh, and also understanding the customer and, and then thinking through how it needs to get built in different shape and form and, and getting it built uh, with various uh, uh, people. And, and also looking at it from a business perspective, uh, given uh, we are part of businesses and so on. So it, it's multidimensional, uh, including uh, customer first, uh, and then uh, the capabilities, driving engagement, uh, building uh, the right capabilities, and looking at it from a perspective as well. Great. Awesome. Uh, Ashima? Hi, I'm Ashima Gwir. I I'm a software engineer in MBA. I currently work as an associate product manager with Gnar Soft, which is the parent uh, company for auto portals like carbeco.com, uh, gadi.com, and so I'm in the used car business unit. Uh, so from, I think uh, my understanding of what a product man what product management is and what the product manager does is something in line with what Priya and Manjana said. I believe product manager is somebody who is at the intersection of what we call customers, technology, and business. Somebody who not only builds and builds product, but it drives the business objectives and as well as looks into different and explores customer expectations and 
experience, uh, build experiences for customers while keeping in mind that business objectives are social. So I think it's a very uh, diverse, uh, cross-functional role which requires a lot of understanding of uh, a lot of verticals which are interlinked. Yet you are part of a lot of things. Yet you are a product manager who is a separate entity and running the entire. I think driving a lot of uh, different business objectives together. Brilliant, diverse, cross-functional role. Fantastic, uh, Tarun. Uh, a very good evening to everyone here. I am Tarun, uh, CEO of Melvano, and uh, I'm also an IT Madras alumnus. To me, product management is uh, two things. One is empathy, uh, putting yourself in the shoes of the customer, trying to find what customers want, uh, what they need. I think figuring out that is one of the biggest challenges, I think. And most of the startups, I think, uh, they die because they are not able to figure out a customer need. So I think product management is about finding the customer need, the hardcore needs, the painkillers. Uh, the second thing I would say product management is all about focus. You have to focus on the right things. You have to prioritize. Uh, you have to focus on things which matter. And a lot of times it's all about saying no to a lot of things. So I think it's all about empathy and focus. Great. Fantastic. Agni? Hi, I'm Agni Bhattacharya, product manager at Facebook. So I'm remotely joining this session from San Francisco. It's great to meet everybody here. My one line take for what is product management is uh, unlocking incremental impact via shipping products and features. So I'll keep it pretty short uh, for that sake and happy to hand it back to Ravi to drive it from here. Thanks, Agni. Shamakya? Thanks, Ravi. Um, and welcome to everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm uh, Chanakya. I work at OnDot Systems. We are a fintech startup based out of the Bay Area, uh, and we're really changing the digital banking and mobile banking space, and I'm working specifically in the mobile product domain. Um, I, I think in my eyes, when I started product management a few years ago, what really helped me was there's a problem space and there's a solution space. And as the product manager, you really own the problem space. Uh, who is the customer you're building it for? What is the real pain point that they have? Uh, at you know, what do they do before your product existed out there in the market? Uh, depending on the product, at what price are they willing to solve that problem for? Um, and then you know, working with your design team, working with the engineering team as you go towards the solution space and defining uh, what needs to be built and why. Uh, so I think just to wrap it up, product management is really about understanding and nailing the problems. And as time goes and as your customers change, making sure that your problem space is consistent with uh, the growing market and competitors and other uh, forces in the industry. Awesome. So that's great, uh, Chanakya. So I'm going to stay with you, Chanakya, for a second here. If you could, uh, uh, and I would like to uh, ask my next question to all the panelists, uh, starting with, uh, I would say, continuing with Chanakya. Uh, if each of you could kind of uh, take a moment to kind of uh, talk about how did you get into product management? Uh, what what led you into product management, and uh, uh, if you could kind of share your uh, journey to product management? Sure, Ravi, I'd love to. So I, I think, uh, like most folks on this panel, at a very early age, you know, we realized that hey, we love playing around with technology. You know, we were the people that went into all the settings menu and played around with the different settings, uh, you know, for different apps and and different uh, browsers and the whole like. So. Uh, when I went to college, I knew I wanted to work at the intersection of technology and how it impacted people uh, and, and ordinary people uh, like you and I. Uh, so when I got to college, I, I went to, to UC Berkeley. I started studying computer science and psychology, thinking that, hey, maybe somewhere down the line, those parts will merge. Uh, but my first few intro classes were, were quite on different ends of the spectrum. Um, in my second year, me and a few of my friends, the uh, entrepreneurship bug bit us, and we said, hey, we're students. We find it, a, we find it really hard to connect with other people on campus, uh, and our campus was quite big, so we started a startup in the ed tech space. Um, unfortunately, that startup didn't go uh, too far, uh, but as a part of building that startup, I really began to understand the problem space that I was talking about, uh, really understanding, hey, who is the customer? Uh, you know, saying that I'm a student, I have a problem doesn't get you too far uh, because there are thousands of people and not everyone is like you. Uh, so validating that pain point, uh, you know, I, I started leaning on classes on design thinking. I started taking classes in economics and, and marketing and strategy uh, to understand, OK, there is a pain point. But how do you build a market out of that? How do you uh, you know, you're not the first person to think of that problem. Uh, how are competitors solving that problem? And then getting into some more of the, the discussions in the D is this should this be a mobile app? Should this be uh, you know, a web based app? Uh, and I think as those conversations really took flight, I realized that 
Uh, I love learning about problem solving on different dimensions. And if only there was a job that allowed me to do that. Uh, and that's when I really realized that product management was this one role. Uh, so I think since then I realized that, hey, product management was, was what I wanted to do. Uh, unfortunately, as I think most college students both here and in the States will face is, um, it's this catch-22 situation where you won't get a job unless you have product experience, but you need a product job to get that experience. Uh, so I realized that, hey, I'll have to kind of, you know, uh, uh, this is going to be a bit of a, I have to jugard my way into this journey. Uh, so at the moment, I was really into UX research, and uh, I was able to get a UX research internship at a travel startup in San Francisco. Uh, and as I was sitting in on those meetings, I kind of uh, annoyed my product manager to say, hey, can I sit in? Can I sit in? Uh, and slowly began to understand what product management really is. And you know, sometimes it's not the you know the, this big and uh, glorifying thing that we talk about. There's a lot of under the stuff uh, routine work that needs to be done. And, and really finding uh, you know a sense of calling in that uh, was when I realized product management was what I wanted to do. Um, after that, I, I did end up graduating in economics, but uh, was thankful enough and lucky enough to get a product management internship uh, before I graduated. Uh, and after graduating, I spent. Uh, almost a year working at this company called Strategy. Uh, they were a product strategy and innovation firm. Uh, I, I wanted to explore uh, opportunities at a consulting firm rather than just one big company, uh, because I felt that even though I wanted to do product management, I didn't know what I wanted to do it in, uh, because there's so many different industries and there's so many different uh, you know, ways to apply product management. Uh, as a 20 year old, I didn't really know what was the right calling for me. Uh, thankfully, working in a consulting firm gave me this breath. I worked with fintech clients and education clients and kind of across the board, uh, realized that fintech was something that I wanted to spend the next few years of my life working towards. Uh, and now I'm on DOT, which is a, a, a fintech startup as well. Great. Uh, fantastic, uh, Chanakya. That's a very interesting journey. Uh, you know, uh, I also have seen many people come from various backgrounds into product management. But I think uh, you're the first person whom I have met who has come from economics background. Uh, getting into product management, but I think the fact that you're working in fintech, uh, do you see a, a benefit of uh, having done uh, economics uh, coursework? No, hundred percent, Ravi. I think uh, I mean this is the obvious benefit that you know I spent a good part of my college learning about how money moves and and, and you know banking and 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 how complex an ecosystem is. Uh, but if I were to abstract it to a, a bigger level, uh, economics at its heart is about there's a very complex economy you know this uh, moving one or impacting one e uh, person in that ecosystem is not going to solve the problem uh, and in a lot of ways being in the the financial services banking industry uh, especially being in a startup that's trying to disrupt banking uh, i think that kind of stakeholder management is very important because you realize that it's not as simple as i'll build an app and the customers will come you need to talk to the banks the processors the credit card companies and there's a lot of under the stuff things that happens. Uh, and I think economics really prepared me for that complexity uh, that uh, maybe some of the other majors might have in, in different forms, but not specifically in as it relates to money. Great, great. Awesome. Uh, Priya? Yeah. So uh, I think my story is going to be a little different from everybody else here. Um, so uh, much like many people, I, I did my bachelor's in computer science, loved technology, been a technologist, um, worked for a couple of years. Uh, uh, in 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 finance, and then when I moved to the United States, uh, my first job was a at a small pathology software company. I mean, we were three of us building the product, writing the code, so to speak. And um, since we we're just three of us, we also figured out what we needed to build into the product. And uh, this meant really talking to the users who were doctors and hospitals. And uh, I realized that I was really interested in what what I really enjoyed was understanding the business, was understanding what is it that they were trying to do with the product. And um, you know, I sort of assumed that to mean that I enjoyed interacting with customers to understand. So uh, like, like Chanakya, I actually kind of stumbled my way or uh, went into consulting and uh, thought, you know, that's, that's what I want to do. And then I realized that just because you are talking to customers doesn't mean that the products you're building are going to be any better, right? Because there's this, this um, you know, customers don't always tell you what it is that you need to build. And here I was consulting, and to me, it was like this is this you know out of the box product, and it was still missing features. And you know, pretty much every customer that I went to, we'd, we'd start off by doing the exact same things. You know, putting in the features that were missing. And uh, so I said, you know, what would be interesting would be to join a company that actually made this product. And uh, back then, this role of a product manager did not exist. 
I, so uh, I joined uh, a company called Vantive, which made CRM software and was part of what was called the applications group. Now, the applications group is the group that sort of uh, worked with uh, the product marketing and you know built the out of the box product. And that's how my journey to product management began. I mean, it, it uh, post that, I think industry realized that there is the need for this role. We need to call it something that is more standardized. And I've been in product ever since. I mean, the domains changed. I was in CRM to start with, uh, you know, SaaS. The, the, first, it was a client server version of CRM software. And then it was the internet, it was SaaS based products. I did digital advertising at Yahoo and uh, was in an ad tech startup for a couple of years. and then at Amazon doing marketplace products and now at Walmart doing e-commerce and omnichannel. So I think, you know, like, like Chanakya said, I mean, I think it's important, you know, when I like with the, with the uh, knowledge and experience that I have now, I think, you know, it's, it's important to try out different things, right? It's not easy to get a break. You have to find what your passion is. Uh, you know, even within product management, there's all kinds of flavors. There's platform, you're building platform products. You might be in, you know, FinTech, like Chanakya was talking about. It might be e-commerce, retail. Uh, and, you know, and domain is not a big thing. I mean, I think you can always come up to speed on domain. So it's, you know, getting the fundamentals right, just, you know, building products with passion, you know, understanding the, the craft of product management. So I would say, you know, that's how I got into product management and have been doing a variety of different things. Great, great, fantastic. Passion first, domain second. All right, awesome. Manju? Hey, yeah, so uh, my uh, journey into product management was also fairly early. Uh, this was around 2001 uh, when uh, post my B-School uh, started a job in consulting and uh, uh, consulting of a software product company. I mean, slightly different from the typical consulting and uh, realized uh, uh, I'm, I'm not able to make decisions on how the product would be shaped. And uh, you, you're given a piece uh, as a consultant or even a technology person on what you got to deliver. And uh, you would have a say on how it gets done. But then I realized uh, if you are a product guy, you could probably think through the problem space better, think through how the solution is going to shape and uh, structure it and uh, then uh, get everybody else aligned, including say the business stakeholders, uh, the uh, stakeholders across customer experience, uh, stakeholders in uh, overall uh, company. And, and so you are able to drive uh, the product capabilities. So that role excited me. And uh, like Priya said, I think that point of time, there wasn't a structured product management role, at least not in India. So I started as product program manager, uh, used to do both uh, product and program management at the first, uh, for the first couple of years and and then uh, eventually uh, started doing pure product management after that uh, and uh, been there uh, doing product for about 20 years now uh, with the uh, first 10 years in uh, supply chain management product uh, next five years at yahoo uh, with uh, consumer facing products for yahoo media and then uh, three years uh, in my own startup uh, a recruitment startup called Heidi uh, started as my notice period and, and then uh, last couple of years been with Mintra and Flipkart. Uh, Ravi. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, Ashima. So uh, <clears throat> my journey, I think, is a slightly different. I got into a product role directly after engineering. But surprisingly, I didn't know a role like product manager exists. And you know, when you're in engineering, you, uh, by the time I was there, I was, uh, we had uh, you know fundamental courses, foundational courses on data science, on artificial intelligence and ML. And so we knew there's something called a data scientist who exists. There's a job role like that. But there was no fundamental course on product management, per se, back in 2015, 16. So uh, I was uh, I got to know about uh, you know product management as a field towards the end of my engineering. I was interning with Gilnar as a software engineer, so software engineer intern. And one day I happened to talk to a person uh, who was a product manager. There. He used to not only he talked not only about uh, you know uh, product or solutions, but he also talked about customers. He talked how it impacted the business, and I really loved how he talked about the different stakeholders in the entire ecosystem of the business. Right from business stakeholders to product owners to you know technologists to customers and understanding in uh, his conversations he had with his customers and the people who were using the product and I found wow this is pretty exciting this is something I would love to do and uh, and this also gives me a, a flavor uh, lets me enjoy a lot of different skills that I already had I used to love talking to a lot of people going out for meetups and networking with a lot of uh, different kind of people and. Uh, 
somewhere down the line i also loved coding but that was not something i wanted to do full time probably that's what i realized during my internship i was good at it but probably not brilliant and product uh, somehow that role and the uh, responsibilities and the entire you know vibe of it synced with what i wanted to do and i was like you know i can do this 24/7 and probably i will not get tired of it and uh, by the time i graduated i decided from engineering i decided okay you know let's look for a product role and i decided not to go ahead with campus placements and i started looking for offline off campus roles and i realized there's no mainstream way of getting into product and i sort of decided okay let me look at what other people did and i tried to find a similar way to get into product management and eventually what happened was it took me about 6 months to get into a product role about 100 plus applications and five or six reverts two interviews and finally the the role that got me into a product role as an associate pm in a bootstrapped mid sized startup and i think uh, i've been extremely happy and grateful that i got to interact have that one conversation during my internship with a product manager which made me realize you know this is what i would love to do and i can still remember the first day i uh, first time i really made a release on the product i worked on it was amazing like i could i even clicked photographs with my developers mm-hmm. like this is a milestone that i've achieved in my life and i absolutely loved it so i think uh, it's been more of i just stumbled across product management i realized and i realized you know this is what i would like love to do 24/7 for the probably next few decades of my life yeah brilliant brilliant dashima i hope everybody watching this uh, are also stumbling upon product management as we speak uh, but you know to your point i think uh, every one of us have been inspired at some point or the other uh you know of a product manager uh, and uh, learned a lot i was very lucky to have a mentor early in my career yeah tarun thanks ravi a uh, 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 very contrary to very uh, what experience other people had like i uh, i would like to call myself more of an accidental entrepreneur uh, i never planned to be entrepreneur in the first place or even be in the product space for that matter but i think what i always started with was with a very curious mind uh, which i had from my, my childhood i was trying out different apps i had like hundreds and thousands of apps in my phone and i was just trying to look for what's the next big thing what's new and how the things work basically uh, i always had that curiosity and i always used to ask that question ki why is the things work they like they do and why do they have to be in a particular way so i was what i was trying to understand was like uh, the human behavior in the first place so i think uh, that in, innate curiosity was from a very early age and uh, i think uh, the tipping point for me was uh, during my uh, uh, during uh, my uh, bachelor's at it madras uh i went into this internship in a edtech startup like a quite a leading edtech startup and uh while i was interning there more on the coding part i actually stumbled that whatever we building that product experience is quite broken so i just went up to the boss and i was like you know uh, i i i think the product is quite broken i think we should just fix this and that and there are so many loopholes in this and why are we not doing this so they were like you know uh, you, you you are just an intern you don't have to tell me my job and you know if you are so smart why don't you go and build your own product so i was like yeah that sounds like a good idea <laughs> right so uh i did resign from that internship within just one month and i started with my own edtech startup in 2019 uh i started working on it in 2018 we launched it in 2019 with just one and a half year uh we scaled up to 1.5 lakh users uh completely organic without any ads and i think that's that's been a very learning experience for me trying to understand what user wants so i i just had to get my hands dirty to learn all those things so i never did any professional courses or anything for that matter it was just like hardcore learning getting your hands dirty that's all fantastic amazing amazing story tarun awesome agni hi uh, yes yeah, so i would describe my path to product management as Uh, very direct but sort of uncommon so the way that i got into product management was uh so chronologically i went to school at Johns Hopkins and i studied applied math and biology there and i had two different internship experiences which really shaped my experiences professionally um outside of school and those are notably software engineering uh full stack development specifically at a b2b ad tech startup in new york and then afterwards uh, a strategy consulting internship at Deloitte in Washington DC And while I liked aspects from both internships, uh, I kind of realized that I wanted a blend of the two. 
And I wasn't exactly sure what that looked like. Um, so I found out my final year of college about a role called product management. And it seemed like a uh, description of it seemed exactly like what I wanted to do. And the thing at this point was that there's very few companies really that hire product managers out of undergrad. Um, I compiled a list of maybe 10 or 15, uh, which were recruiting directly out of schools. And I ended up applying uh, to all of them, which still had their deadlines open, um, which is probably about a good 10 companies. And then I ended up getting one offer um, with a uh, company, Zynga, the, the gaming company located in San Francisco. So that brought me to the West Coast. So while it was a pretty direct path for me, like I started as an associate product manager out of undergrad and uh, for the last almost four years now, I've only ever worked as a product manager in increasingly uh, senior roles. Um, the kind of like interesting uh, things to note about that is, uh, as many others have alluded to here, there's no direct path really into product management and there's no, um, I guess like there's just so many different um, variations uh, among it, like the, the route into the industry and uh, people's journey even within the industry is very um, heterogeneous, I'd say. So um, that's definitely something worth noting. And I think my direct path uh, from undergrad into it was um, actually one of the rarest that I can think of. The most common um, anecdotally that I've heard and seen really from people is others moving from an adjacent role, whether that might be software engineering, design, analytics, ops, um, really anything so long as uh, they work within a company where product management is uh, indeed a role. So that's kind of my takeaway from my experience of getting into product management. Awesome. That's that's great, uh, Igni. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So I'm going to uh, ask this question to everyone and anybody who would like to answer can jump in. Uh, we've spoken about what is product management and how did you get into product management. There's also an aspect of product management that many people mistake or um, confuse product management with so many other things. So uh, what is product management not? Uh, would anybody like to jump in? Can you can you repeat the question, Ravi? I think I just lost you there. So what is product management not about? Uh, for example, if I were to expand the question, uh, product management is often mistaken to be project management, probably with the more glamorous title. Or in some companies, product management is reduced to project management. Right? So if somebody uh, is a student uh, who's listening to this, uh, can you help clarify uh, what is product management not about? Sure, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, since I did uh, start my first role as product and program management, uh, I, I uh, over a period switched to pure product management after like first uh, year or so. And uh, th th there's a lot of difference, right? I mean, when you're a program manager or a project manager, for that matter, you're focused on uh, pushing uh, for delivery timelines, uh, getting things done in a specific uh, way, uh, in a specific process and timeline and stuff. And, and then uh, in, in companies that do not have program project managers, uh, they end up uh, pushing uh, some of that to either the engineering leaders or the product leaders. And then, uh, so that starts diluting because uh, as a product person, uh, you should be focusing more on thinking through how the product is going to fit the consumer needs and uh, what you're building is really in line with that and also be tracking the metrics in terms of the movement adoption uh, the journey on the funnel uh, the uh, the utilization of the product and is that going right because if you tend to take up other areas of work uh, like program management for example you would then uh, dilute the role and uh, probably be more in listening mode uh, rather than the thinking and uh, getting uh, execution done right so i think uh, that becomes a challenge and uh, over a period the roles dilute uh, and 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 then uh, you're probably not as effective uh, a product uh, manager that you need to be uh, because you are then uh, switching uh, on a very different hat and, and and trying to deliver on something very different that said in a startup in an early stage company you might have to wear multiple hats uh, but i think uh, in uh, larger organizations uh, people should not definitely uh, pursue product guys to be the uh, delivery and timeline owners as well. I, I can uh, say something, Ravi. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure people have heard that, uh, you know, being a product manager is like being the CEO of your own product. It sounds very cool, but there's a big difference there because, you know, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, product managers don't have uh, direct control over things, right? If you're the CEO, you can get things to align. Whereas for product managers, and I think this is a big part of the job really is, 
about how do you align all these different people without really having direct control. So it's a lot of stakeholder management. You have to align with you know the the exact uh, leadership, convincing them that maybe this is a new product and the reason why they need to fund it. Why why do you need to build that product? What is the purpose for that product? If you're in a B two B company, you need to work with sales. You need to kind of you know work with them to allow them and empower them to sell the product, convince them that it's worth selling. Uh, there's, of course, the constant that uh, uh, working with engineering to actually build the product. Uh, there's also like uh, like um, Manju was mentioning, there is uh, elements of program management. You have to you know launch it. So whatever it takes to launch it, you may or may not have the, a dedicated program person. Uh, but there's also a lot of confusion between inbound, outbound product marketing, product management. You know where where does that line really lie? And again, it just depends upon the company. Like if you know, startups, some companies, you know, the product manager does everything from, you know, conceptualizing, you know, doing the industry anal analysis, building the product out. In some companies, you might have more of a product marketing role, which is really, you know, much more of the outward facing, right? How do you launch the product, the go to market? Um, so I would say when you're looking at product manager, it's a little of everything that you need to do, everything to do, you know, get the idea, launch it, work with people. You know, convince them, align them, all of it. Get, you know, actually build it and then launch it, right? So I think it's a bit of everything. But I do want to call out that it is a lot of working with different people. There's a lot of relationships that need to be managed. A lot of stakeholders that you work with. Great, great, fantastic. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Um, I think one thing that I realized, especially maybe coming from an economics background, where most of my peers were going into consulting, um, I realized that product management is not just industry research. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, a lot of people are fans of, hey, what's the latest trend in technology? Oh, what's this new app and how it's getting, you know, millions of users in different markets. And those are very uh, interesting intellectual conversations to have, uh, but they end up being passive. Uh, as a product manager, if you spend all your time looking at, hey, what the next company is doing, you're not really going to get anything done. Uh, I think as a product manager, yes, that's an interesting competitive information. Uh, but the way I see it is you should be getting enough information to make the next decision. And the next decision should be uh, to getting the next product out or getting your hypothesis tested. Uh, so I uh, I think one of the things that um, I, I learned maybe the hard way or maybe uh, the right way is you can never have all the information in product management. Uh, if you're coming from a background where you do not work in those ambiguous spaces, uh, you will learn the hard way that uh, the pursuit of infinite knowledge is not going to help you be a product manager. Uh, maybe you could be on the strategy side of things. Maybe you could be in a place where there are less variables. Uh, but as a product manager, you will be working with unknown unknowns. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's about, hey, what's the right amount of information to move forward? Uh, and then moving forward and kind of refining your uh, your target as you go forward. Great, great. Well said. Well said, Shanak. Yeah. yeah, unknown unknowns. Dealing with the unknown unknowns, absolutely. Yeah, OK. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, request all of you to wear your sales hat and uh, sell product management to, uh, to, to our viewers. Uh, why should someone choose product management as a career? Uh, would you say it's a salary or it's an opportunity to talk to users? Uh, what in your mind is the most rewarding aspect of product management for you? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Agni. We'll start with you, Agni. Sounds good. Yeah, to me, the most rewarding aspects um, of the career, I think there's really many upsides uh, to working in the career, but to me personally, the one uh, that stands out the most year over year is uh, the ability to uh, really rapidly context switch. And what I mean by that is the job, um, as, as many people have mentioned here, is extremely cross-functional. Um, what this very tactically means in your day-to-day -day workplace is you might go into a meeting uh, with legal to talk about like, how am I going to build this product with given the regulations uh, around GDPR in the European Union, um, and then go into a meeting with uh, design afterwards to talk about the UI, and then finally like cap off with uh, talk with data science about new test. So I think it's it's really interesting, and these might even be back to back to back meetings uh, that you have within a day where, where you'll be attending and frequently driving a lot of these meetings as well. Um, so I think the ability to rapidly context switch, uh, change gears all the time, and like approach uh, the subject uh, from a different hat and really understanding your audience um, that you're with is, is really um, a fun thing. And to me, the reason that it was uh, pretty specifically quite fun is, um, so I went to school at Johns Hopkins and they have a liberal arts style of education there, which is, um, in other words, yeah, like you take a lot of, lot of different classes in addition to your major um, in various subjects, whether it's, uh, you know, the arts or, or 
uh, music or whatever you want, really. Um, and I think the ability to um, context switch was really um, something I found very rewarding from that experience. And then um, as a result, I see a direct link to that in my, my product management career. Great. I would like to take this up, Ravi. Or actually, if you want to go first, then it's OK. Please go ahead. Thank you. OK. Yeah. So I think uh, the most lucrative part of uh, you know going into product management is about it teach, teaches you discipline. I think that's the first and foremost thing uh, why I love something like a product management. Uh, it teaches you discipline. It helps you make the right decisions. You have to focus on the right things. And I would say uh, this is slightly lesser in the case of a very well-established companies. Uh, in startups, especially, you, ha you have a very high risk if you just go on with the wrong feature or you put too much time, all the resources. Since you, you again have a cap on the resources, the money, everything, the time especially. So I think if you give too much time, too much money on just any one of the features and that goes wrong, uh, it, it, it actually can just kill your startup the very next time. So I think the being in as a product manager, you have to focus on the right things, the right set of features. You have to say no to a lot of things. Uh, you have to just cut through the noise. And I think that actually helps you make the right decision in future. So I think the one best thing about product management, what can they, what product management can teach you is about the right decision making, impact decision making. So I think that's that's my viewpoint. Super. Yeah, Shima. So, uh, I think uh, one of the main reasons for me uh, to join in product was it gave me an outlet to bring creativity into technology. So I all I was studying uh, computer science, and we had certain ways of doing things, and we were learning uh, different aspects of uh, you know computer science. But at the same time, I was pretty much interested into other fields, like what is happening, uh, you know, reading about psychology, economy, and uh, things like designing, probably. And I had a knack for embroidery and picking up new stuff, uh, you know, things that are creative at heart. And I found that you know uh, product management really gives you a channel to bring in creativity into technology and providing solutions which are creative and uh, why should somebody pick up product management I think you should just pick up because you love something you might not uh, like uh, everything that a job or a particular role brings to you on plate but I think if you can at least get uh, ha you're happy with about 80 to 70 percent of what you do in your day I think you're that's a good place to be in and I think uh, uh, for me, it's like, you know, if you're a creative folk, you love technology, you can uh, talk to a lot of people and you love to talk to people. And there's a lot of, and you're okay and comfortable to work in ambiguous situations where people might not give you answers and you're working with 10 different kinds of stakeholders and everybody has its own priority, priorities. And you don't really know that how are you going to manage and bring out something very, uh, you know, uh, output out of that kind of uh, environment. I think if you love that kind of an environment and challenge, I think product management would be a great uh, career path. Uh, and Probably, I think uh, you should work for joy. It sounds very uh, artificial at words, but uh, if you can't really, uh, you might not enjoy every part of it. Then you just have to bear with the twenty percent or fifteen percent of stuff you don't like and uh, keep up with it because you just you want to keep up with the eighty percent of things you like during your day. Yeah. Beautiful advice. Right. Yeah, Priya, please. So I think if you really love creating impact at scale, business impact, and you really want to be able to you know, use the creativity, use the prioritization, be able to create it and actually see it by measuring it, like you know, the, the rewards would be in like you creating the business impact and being able to actually see how it's impacted the business, how it's helped customers. Great, great, fantastic. I'm going to jump to my next question. I think we are uh, running out of time here. I got a lot more things to cover. Uh, so, uh, okay, I think we've covered all the nice parts. Now, let's also get real, okay? Um, let's look at some of the challenges and frustrations of being a product manager. Uh, yes, there are challenges, day-to-day -day challenges, right? Especially early in your career. Uh, so, if uh, each of you could share uh, some of the top challenges or frustrations that you faced, especially early in your career or, or even in your day-to-day -to -day job today as well. And how did you overcome that? Yeah, maybe Manju, uh, would you like to start? Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I remember maybe three of us common, uh, Priya, Ravi, you and me, and uh, at, at Yahoo, we had a, a session where uh, uh, one of our uh, VP, then Ram, basically talked about, uh, describe what a product manager should be good at. And, and the list came up to be just about everything, right? The product manager should be 
a good uh, business thinker, a product manager should be uh, able to understand technology, a product manager should be able to do program management well, Pro a product manager should be able to motivate people. Able and, and, and so it looked like the list is huge and uh, you probably need to find somebody from heaven uh, to get it right, right? Um, so, so the reality is uh, there is a lot of expectations out of product managers. And uh, I, I, I think uh, it, it is a, a tough job. Uh, that said, it is very, uh, uh, very, very, it needs a lot of high energy. It needs a, a lot of uh, persuasion, uh, influence, uh, motiv motivation to others, a lot of deep thinking. And, and that's a lot, lot of uh, good things. Uh, and I think uh, while uh, these are uh, reasons to not do it, at the same time, they make it. This makes it easier to switch over to say, like running a business. You, you are you are a multi-dimensional. Uh, this this is kind of a very good uh, uh, role for you because uh, despite all these challenges and expectations, you need to. Uh, if you're excited about multitasking. If you're excited about uh, doing multiple things and being able to take decisions on how, say, the product should be driven, uh, how the product capability should be built, I think this is an exciting role uh, despite all the challenges and the expectations around it, uh, but clearly uh, uh, high expectations on the role, though. Great, great. Well put. Yeah. Priya, would you like to share? Yeah, I think, um, uh, Chanaka, do you want to go? I tell you, Henry is good. I'll speak up. Oh, uh uh, thanks, Priya. Uh, I, I think one thing early on uh, was, as I mentioned, my first foray into product management was with the startup that me and a few college friends had created. And in that uh, startup, I played the role of the, the UX designer and I got really into, hey, how to, how to make things usable, how to make things look good. And I, that was really, I got into UX research. Uh, and when I got into product management officially, I think I still carried that hey, I have a background in UX design, and therefore I want to inform uh, the exact design down to the pixels. So oh, this looks better, this looks better. Um, and I think that was one of my first learnings where I needed to step back and I needed to allow the different domains, uh, whether in this case it was UX design, but also whether it's product marketing or engineering, uh, to allow them to do their jobs because A, they were more qualified at it, uh, it than I am, uh, and B, that really wasn't my role in product management. Uh, my role was to define the problem space, and if I could define it uh, to the best of my capabilities, uh, hopefully downstream teams are able to pick it up and you know take it to the next level. Uh, so I think one, uh, and you know, I, I obviously did not study computer science, but talking to my peers, uh, I've felt that uh, they've also echoed similar things. Where if they study computer science, if they have a pretty solid background in engineering, when they get to product, they are informing the how rather than the why and the what. Uh, and that kind of leads to, hey, like, what am I really doing? And kind of conflicts between the other teams. So just taking a step back was something I realized. Uh, and once you do that, you realize that, hey, the teams that are actually getting paid to do uh, the implementation, uh, you know, do a great job and uh, it's a happy family after that. Awesome. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, just to add to what everybody's been saying, um, I think part of the frustration is when you're deep, you know, neck deep in your product and you know the, the, the sort of business impact that you can create, um, there are the realities, right? I mean, Taran kind of alluded to the fact that in startups, it's it's a lot more, but even big companies, I mean, there is a certain budget, there's a certain fixed uh, lim or a limit to the resources that you'd have. So you're forced to prioritize. Um, so, you know, it's a little, little frustrating at times knowing that, you know, here are 10 things that I can do to generate this huge impact, which is going to, you know, take the company, you know, places, but you have to kind of prioritize and there's only room for maybe two, right? So how do you pick that two? And, you know, it's, it's a little frustrating when sometimes you, you have all the opportunities and you know what it can do, uh, but having to, having to prioritize. The other thing that I would say is like, um, you know, what you learn really quickly is, um, you have to be a very details person. Because if you leave things open to interpretation, what comes out as a product might be very different from what you were planning. So, you know, while it's not frustrating, I think it's definitely something that you need to be really, really uh, focused on making sure that you are thinking through everything firstly, and then also, you know, articulating what that is. Great, great, fantastic. Um, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, Agni, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so mine should be pretty short, but um, when you mentioned this question, it reminded me of a popular uh, cartoon by an author, Dan Olson, who is uh, well known in the product management industry. And in this cartoon, he has two panels. Uh, on the left side, it's Spider-Man. And then uh, the quote there is, uh, with great power comes with great responsibility. Um, and then on the right panel, uh, there's a product manager with, with large glasses and in a dress shirt. And 
um, the quote there is, uh, responsibility comes no power. Um, and I think that really accurately captures the sentiment of uh, working in product management, where uh, you have responsibility and, and ownership over the success of the product, uh, mostly from a business metric standpoint, but also from a morale standpoint in a big way. Um, and you don't actually have any um, like power or authority over the people who work on it. Um, most of the time, uh, again, very tactically, the engineers on your team will not be reporting to you. They'll be reporting to an engineering manager. The designers won't be reporting to you either. Um, so it is one of the, I'd say, like downsides of the job, yes, but also one of the most kind of interesting challenges of the job of how does one actually uh, drive this product forward um, in, in terms of uh, like in an environment where you basically have no authority and and sort of power that way. And I think the way around that um, that I've seen is being really direct about selling people on uh, what is the five-year vision of the product? Like, where do we want to be in five years? Um, and just the intrinsic reason behind that is that people are a lot more motivated um, by sort of internal factors and, and mission and vision and strategy um, as opposed to any sort of external factors, whether it's compensation or benefits um, really, or, or social status of a particular job. Um, so I think that's, um, it, to me, that would sum up the uh, like downside of, of working in product management and present the greatest challenge. Yeah, yeah. Brilliantly put. Absolutely. So I would also like to add uh, my two cents, Ravi, here. Please. So I think uh, most of the people talked about various aspects of product management, but I think uh, coming from the background where I didn't know about product management, the biggest issue I faced was... Uh, finding how truthful people are. I think that was the biggest issue with me because when you make something, you build a feature and you show it to people, you know, Ki, this is how it is and do you like this? And a lot of people will be like, yeah, this seems cool, this, this is great. And, you know, when you actually build this and give it to people and you are like, you know, uh, go use it and you find out from the metrics, no one is actually using it so even though people are like sugar coating you know this is great and this is all nice and you know it's it, it feels like you know alice in wonderland but uh the ground reality actually is you know shown by metrics uh you figure out ki, okay what people say uh that's you, you have to just take it with a pinch of salt so i think initially that becomes very hard for a lot of people in product management to actually just go and digest you know keep uh, whatever they have put in so much effort that's not gonna work out and sometimes it's as a founder it, it becomes very hard for you to realize you know whatever you have built till now that's that's not working out and you just have to iterate 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 so it's 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 like so many iterations just go into just finding that product market fit and and i think the second part i would want to just talk about is as a product manager you have to always at least in startups you have to focus on trying to find something like a product market fit and like a lot of people talk about that, people talk about what it is, but frankly, if you see, nobody actually knows how to reach that product market fit, how to reach that thing. So I think that confuses a lot of people and it, it takes it takes a lot and a lot of time to actually figure out things in product management. So I think that's that's one of the hard part uh, in a product manager's journey. Tarun, <clears throat> those uh, two are very excellent points you have brought up. Uh, NASCOM products uh, run uh, a lot of workshops on uh, product management topics. They cover uh, solutions or um, ideas on how you can uh, address these, uh, uh, these these problems that you have brought up, either learning from observation, uh, things like that, yeah, and how to achieve product market fit. Great. Uh, we've got less than uh, 12 minutes, so I'm going to uh, jump to my next question, which is a very important question uh, <clears throat> that is breaking into product management. So I would request uh, each of the panelists to kind of uh, uh, to share your advice uh, for uh, how can a student who is watching this uh, uh, panel discussion, uh, how does a student break into product management? And especially, please uh, do share if your company is hiring uh, product managers. Yeah. Ashima, would you like to start? Yes, sure. So I think uh, there are two paths to getting into product management. Uh, very early on in your career one is to get the uh, some kind of background skills to uh, you know start looking for uh, product jobs and so you are you know at least uh, proficient enough to sit for interviews and track them and i think uh, product really requires a combination of hard skills and soft skills uh, you know skills right from technical writing clarity of writing and uh, domain knowledge uh, technical know how design sense as well as persuasion because you're going to work with a lot of stakeholders and like a lot of panelists mentioned you don't really have direct control on the people or you know uh, any uh, type of authority on the people you work with 
they're all different teams they have their different priorities and way of working so i think these are two uh, skills is first part and second is how to get into it i think there's no mainstream way of getting into product management from what i understand like software uh, if you look at a, a role like software engineering you might get into uh, do an engineering and you might be eligible enough you know have an edge over to get into a, a software engineering role but for product i think there's no uh, uh, standard or mainstream part of getting into product management but one of the few ways i discovered that were really helpful when i was starting off as a product uh, looking for product uh, roles one was uh, looking for internships i think internships are fantastic way of uh, getting into a new role because you given your employer an opportunity to check uh, you know uh, really gauge whether you are good enough or you are mapping to the kind of expectations the uh, employer has for a product person in his, or his or her organization and you also at the same time get some experience and i think the chicken hen problem of getting enough product experience to apply for a product role sort of till a certain level you can uh, you know uh, cross that path and second is uh, there are a lot of networking events i think we lost her uh oh some network issue maybe we can go ahead yeah. Okay. I, I, I can maybe continue uh, on this same question if you want okay. to be, or we can switch to the next one if you have more questions. No, no, please, no, just have that question is for everybody. Please go ahead. Okay, got it, got it. So I think uh, it it varies depending on the size of the company. Some companies have APM programs like Flipkart does, and but then I think there's restrictions on which colleges they hire from. Uh, so maybe I would uh, I I liked uh, what Ashima just said. Uh, it's probably good to start off in a smaller company. Uh, if you want to straight away start on product management, maybe get internship, or uh, straight away start product uh, in smaller companies, or maybe if you're a larger, if you get into larger companies, typically uh, people move roles, change roles, including Flipkart has programs where uh, there is a, a, a way to change uh, to product management from other roles, including business roles to technology roles, and there's like a proper six months internship internally uh, to allow people to train and switch to product management roles so internally it's as well uh, possible so i think both these options are good probably great fantastic priya yeah i think um, you know one way to get into product management is you know obviously from uh, from b school internships uh, it doesn't have to be b school it could be software internships but you know if you could pick a place where you know there is a product management uh, function job function right and like uh, manju was mentioning this uh, you know ask about apms right so it's it's a big thing that all of us need to invest in so it's really uh, investing in you know while there's really nothing that you could just study and say i'm i'm you know going to become a really good product manager it's a series of experiences that you have to get to but um, finding this program that will help you get started finding good role models finding mentors i mean those are the things that you really need to look for uh, if it's a startup see if you can actually get an opportunity you have to ask questions so see if you will get audience with you know the exact team with the with the founder to say hey you know help me understand so it's um, i would say it's a lot of learning that's needed and you know happy to see nascom actually taking a huge making huge uh, steps in this like to get training in all these different skills which is not part of any curriculum right and so i think we'll see a lot of that as well so you know really um make the most of all the learnings that you can whether it's your own whether it's from uh, different places that are offering it from people role uh, reach out get get men mentors look for role models great yeah apm is the associate product manager so ravi i would just want to uh, give my two cents on this please go ahead uh, ashima is back yeah. ashima will come back to you after tarun Sure. Yeah. 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 So, so basically, uh, at Melvano, we didn't have a product manager till very recently, uh, because I think I was working more on the product side, and I'm very enthusiastic about it. Uh, but recently, we did, we did hire a product manager. So basically, uh, how it just went like is that there's this lady who just uh, still in college and like just about to graduate, and she has a good. a uh, knack of you know the edtech sector and she did a lot of research about the other edtech startups and she did a lot of research about melvano she tried out the app and lot of things and she just did a like a just a message on linkedin and she just reached out to me ki hey taran this is uh, i am this and that and i have done this 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 
and uh, you know i just find ki your product actually lacks these things and i think maybe probably you can work on this and she made a very nice presentation to it and i happened to read that i invested my time on it and i personally loved the presentation and uh, we just had a quick call and i offered her the position ki when can you join in and when is your college getting over so i think in lot of very early stage startups we they might not have Uh, something as a APM role or a product manager role as such, but in that cases, if you want to actually get a product manager role, you can either maybe start off as an intern, I think, which Ashima said, or else you can even try uh, messaging the founder and maybe tell them about what the product lacks, give your own two cents on it, and show them you can add value. I think just showing that. just showing that you can add value to the organization i think uh, that gives a lot of trust so i think uh, that could be a alternate way to reach out to startups okay that's a good point uh, i would like to complete your conversation sure yeah. i'm so sorry for the loss of internet connectivity at that no yeah so uh, one was uh, internship and i think uh, another great way is probably you can look at exploring early stage startups that's what i started doing i frankly i love the environment and vibe of a startup uh, startupish company and i love how you get to play multiple roles and wear multiple hats across it so early stage startups are a good way to learn product you might not learn the procedural way of doing things but you will learn a lot of things in in a very short period of span so uh, like i got to learn a lot of things right from how to make a wireframe because i uh, product was uh, apm as an apm it was my first job and my first job ever as a professional so i started right from understanding what is product what do you really mean by requirements right to you know giving demos to probably cxos of the, uh, a lot of tra- major travel agencies across the world so i think uh, early stage startups are another great way to get into product management and they i think somewhere down the line they are looking more for a committed person to work for you rather than you know for the exact uh, experience skill set person And third, I think some uh, by the time I joined, uh, uh, Priya was talking about APM programs. I think they are a fantastic way to get into product management. And I was no, I didn't really know about them. Uh, I just got to know about pro- APM programs a few years back down the line. But they're a fantastic way if you are in a final year of your engineering or masters. I think uh, some great companies offer APM programs which are just curated to uh, you know build the product skills that are required in a very short period of time, and you can get to work on some amazing products. so apm programs are an amazing way to get into product and i think the a lot of major apm programs are still open for the next cohorts so probably you know students who are out there might like to join in right okay okay uh, fantastic i'm going to jump to my next question um actually my plan of having 20 minutes each is like completely out the window uh, so my this is the only question i'm going to squeeze in from the third part of this uh, talk that is as a very important question that we need to uh, that i would love for the uh, viewers to uh, know about and that is um uh, you know how does a uh, career path look like in product management uh, priya would you like to take this sure yeah i mean i think you know uh, there are levels in product manager you you start off uh, initially you know being uh, the product manager for maybe a small feature uh, then it gets your you know portfolio gets bigger it's a set of products you know and and at somewhere along the way uh, you usually start off as an individual contributor basically you don't have people Uh, you don't have people management responsibilities it's you're really directing the vision and the execution of the product uh after a certain point there's a choice that you can make to either stay as a principal and you know continue to be the individual contributor or if you want to start taking on people management responsibilities and really have uh, build a team under you um and then uh, in in some companies i mean and it's it's uh, pretty common to see people also switch to related roles right so you see uh, people moving from product management to product marketing or you know even marketing and you know you become like the cmo uh you know so your paths are really you know ic people manager vice president products or a C- cpo uh you could go on to uh, you know like actually many many companies are founded by people who are product managers so you know you do your own thing uh but i would say what you need to really work your way towards is increasing impact increasing set of products and whether or not you want to have uh the people management responsibilities and as you go up i mean it's really you know it's really controlling the 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 business and you know what what is it that the company needs to do so that's at at the highest level it's really defining the vision for the company itself 
Great, great. So from uh, PM to founder, like how we have in Manju, I even Tarun also for that matter, uh, from PM to general manager as well, and from PM to CEO, right? Brilliant. Okay. Uh, so got less than a minute, so I'm going to jump uh, to a rapid fire. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, you know five questions. Uh, don't think too much about it. Just go with the flow. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so we'll uh, do Ashima first, Manju, Priya, Agni, Taran, and then Chanakya. Okay. All right. Uh, Ashima, technology first or customer first? Customer first. Manju. Customer. Priya. Customer. Agni. Customer. Taran. Customer first, obviously. Chanakya. I don't think I can say technology, so I'll say customer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's great. All right. Next one incremental design or disruptive design? Ashima? Incremental. Disruptive. It depends on whether you're creating a new product or uh, incremental product, actually. So if right. I'm creating a new product, it would be disruptive. If it is an incremental product, then incremental design, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Same answer as you. Anybody just take this with that? <laughs> I, I think it should be disruptive hypotheses. Even if you are building incremental products, you should be willing to ask questions that, uh, uh, or hypotheses that, if you're wrong about that hypothesis, it really challenges your worldview of building that incremental uh, product. Uh, and then, of course, you know, once you're wrong, solve it incrementally so that you know you're not wrong twice. But uh, I think you should be willing to ask more questions. So I'll okay. say option C: do it the Elon Musk way. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. All right, next question. Can I'll say, I'll or, say okay. incrementally in a disruptive way. Look at okay. you know how you can do things differently. Okay. Third question: consultative or authoritative? Consultative. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Fourth question: strategy first or execution first? Strategy first. Strategy first. Strategy. Strategy. I would go with execution. Okay, that's interesting. I, I, I would also go with execution if it's a startup. Uh, you do want to validate your core hypotheses as quickly as possible. Uh, of course, in a more established company, you have the luxury of knowing what problem you're solving. So uh, building that vision and not prioritizing short-term goals uh, is a great advantage. All right, my last question, uh, hopefully controversial. Uh, greatest of all time product manager, Steve Jobs or Sundar Pichai? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you very much for playing the rapid fire. I think Sundar Pichai will also say Steve Jobs. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> right. I, I, I think tricky one would have been Elon Musk versus uh, Steve Jobs. I had that as my first choice, actually. Steve, yeah. Jobs, yeah. Yeah. Steve yeah. Jobs probably yeah. would have also Elon said Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Vinit, can we run the poll? OK, now let's go to Q&A. Um, <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, so we need the, okay, I've got a question here. Uh, wait a minute, what was the question? Not able to. Okay, um, got, a, got a question here. How easy it is to shift from one tech to another in a PM role? What advice will you give to undergrads to be successful in it? So one okay. technology to another technology. Is it? Yeah, I guess that's what he meant. I, yeah. I, I, I think uh, what Priya said earlier in her chat was, um, Switching domains is not a challenge. I think te switching technology is probably even lesser a challenge. Uh, I, I, it depends on uh, what kind of systems you're talking about. Uh, but if you're, say, web space and web architecture, uh, they're probably a lot more easier. But if you're switching from like major technologies across uh, non-web to the web and stuff, then it might be a little more complex. I think uh, less, far less easier than even switching domains. I, I, would, I would add to what Manju said and just be really, really clear why are you switching technologies as well, right? I mean, the clarity in thought is, you know, is it just technology for the sake of technology because it's in, you know, the new shiny thing or, you know, just what is it buying you by switching as well? Yeah, I mean, what, what is the consumer getting? What's the business getting? What's the company getting, right? I think that's a key choice. I mean, or if you're just changing for your choice of career, I think technology should not be the uh, reason probably. Okay. Uh, just add, adding to that, some, uh, I haven't uh, had a long enough career to really switch domains, but I did work in consulting where uh, I guess we had shorter switches between domain. And what I realized was at the end of the day, you might be switching technologies, you as a PM might be switching domains, but the customer is likely the same person. 
right? I mean, the customer uses Facebook, Flipkart, and uh, Swiggies. So even if you are switching domains, they are one person with one uh, thoughts and perspectives on the world. So if you can align yourself on a customer and their pain points, uh, switching domains comes easier. OK. Uh, next question, is it advised to stick to one product or diversify the range of products you work with in order to develop PM skills? I would say, you know, I don't know if you've read the book Range, but it's really about getting a broad variety of experiences. And so I would say it's, it's OK in the initial part of your career to kind of flounder around a little experiment and find what your passion is. Agree. Yeah, yeah, OK. Good. All right. Next question. How product management is related to entrepreneurship? I think I think a product manager is uh, like an entrepreneur, has to be very creative, has to think about customers, has to think about a, a product that is going to be engaging, is going to be uh, viable from a business standpoint. So I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurial traits are needed in the product manager. And uh, my switch from, say, product to being an entrepreneur was uh, uh, far easier maybe compared to uh, if I were doing a different uh, role. Um, so I think I, I think it's pretty close. Uh, uh, it's not all the way there, but I think uh, the key things in the product technology world, you're probably close to it. Yeah, brilliant. You so heard I'll just know. probably make a slightly controversial statement. So I would say uh, maybe it's controversial, but OK, I'll anyways do it. So I think uh, product management is uh, probably a subset of uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, so if you have to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to nail it as a product manager because uh, without a successful product, without uh, I think uh, you I think as an entrepreneur, you have to have a couple of other skills, which are like selling skills. You have to be a good salesman. But at the same time, you have to make a great product. I think so, uh, product management is probably like a subset of it. True, okay. not controversial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Chanakya, I think this question, uh, you would be the best person to answer this. Non-tech background switching to product management, how to go about it? Uh, yeah, so I think the first thing to realize is even if you know you have a non-technical major, you did study something, and and you know hopefully it's uh, it's not something that's totally out of the blue. Uh, but I did minor in city planning, and my point was I studied city planning so that I could understand how people interact with public spaces, and you know and in one way that's what the definition of an interface really is, how people solve and, and navigate their needs. Uh, so my my question to that person would be: if you have a non-technical background, take a step back and realize. Hey, if I have a psychology degree, or I have a degree in finance, or if I have a degree in, uh, let's say, mathematics, how can I look at my favorite app or my favorite product and provide a unique perspective that, let's say, an engineer might not have? Uh, I, I think going back to problem space versus solution space also helps you as well, where the solution space is how do you build the product? And I think that's where uh, you know having a technical degree really is required. Uh, but the problem space is, is a bit more abstract. And you know if you can find your niche, I think it's quite helpful. Uh, I think that's one. Uh, number two, I think realizing that, OK, yeah, I may not have a technical background is one step. But then taking start reading up about it. You, know, you can go pretty far about learning about basic technologies, understanding what APIs are, understanding uh, you know, what is the latest feature in, in the iOS versions or the Android versions. Uh, just because you are not technical does not mean you do not like technology. Uh, I think that uh, is a distinction that really helps. I mean, you can't just say I'm not technical, and you know, therefore I will not learn about so and so product. I think uh, learning about that, and of course, uh, talking to engineers and designers once you're within the company to learn more about that. Good, good, good. Okay, um, this is a good one. Would you suggest breaking into product manager as a fresher or gradually reach it? So I'd probably. Yeah, go ahead, Ashima. So I would into pieces of fresher so it has its own set of challenges but it's a it's a journey you might enjoy uh, in itself because you might end up being probably the youngest person working with the team and the people you might be working with might be a decade or two decades older than you and you ha still have to get the work done get the job done from them so i think uh, the, uh, and you are still in that phase of learning what a product manager does acquiring those basic skills of get building getting you to build a product so for me personally when i started off it was i was i was the youngest employee in the organization we were about 100 odd people there and every the, the entire tech team was about a decade older to me and they were like you know this young fresher just out of college is coming and telling us how to build a product 
and then i think that's uh, fine. there's nothing wrong in like i'm not saying uh, they did something wrong but i think uh, you really have to set yourself you have to uh, really prove yourself out there like you know you really know what you you are doing you're clear in the thought process that you're trying to build and you're there for the team i think it uh, as a fresher it's a way, an interesting space because you're still learning i remember i made 100 plus wireframes before my product my manager said okay this one looks good enough to go and get into your design phase so things like that would be interesting and probably if you gradually reach you might learn a lot of things which as a fresher you might not like things like how to work across teams because as a fresher that's your first role and you're directly put into a place where you're working with a lot of different stakeholders who are coming from varied backgrounds but when you reach gradually through a role i think you start to start matured up get matured enough up enough to understand and you know how to communicate and work across teams i think that's what i would say yeah it's good to start off as a professor from my, from what i understand yeah agree here something to say yeah um i think uh, yeah actually my mistake was really good i also started off uh directly out of college in product management and i will say that is uh by far i think like the least common path although the most direct path um the interesting take there is is that you will work with people who are substantially older and more mature than you um frequently i think uh yeah like one of the questions that i get um at work pretty often is you know just very casually like are you married do you have kids uh, both of which are are no in my case um so i think people often assume that you you could be anywhere from 5 to 10 years older than you actually are um if you pick in as the fresher <laughs> but um the interesting thing uh just aside there is that um i think the the benefit of joining directly um out of university for example is that y- you like it, you'll actually be able to like progress i guess like more quickly in the career because when doing our uh, product management interviews like you know in the very initial stages of resume screening and and kind of phone screens as well um three of the big things that recruiters in particular look at um in addition to like the, the person who does the first phone screen is years of product management experience uh, which is simply a number of years on your resume and then what impact have you driven during those years of experience and finally do you have any people management experience which would actually put you on a very different interview track um typically but if you have any of those and a lot of those do come uh frankly with time as well um you do get an advantage if you join directly out of university versus switching um that being said i think it's frankly a lot easier um to get into the role by switching from another adjacent role um and i i've seen the vast majority of product managers we ever work with were working in some other function before switching in great great fantastic uh manju and taran this question is ideal for you how crucial is it for a product manager to be thorough in pricing skills pricing skills so i think uh, it it depends on what kind of product you are eventually building uh, so if you're a web uh, product uh, person like say uh, i was at media uh, and you were looking at uh, say advertisers need to come in on your platform and uh, say with yahoo autos we're looking at how do you uh you know generate uh, uh, more revenue through leads and stuff so there are areas where you need to really understand uh, uh, the compromise between monetization versus uh, great products especially on the web domain where how, mu- how much of your product should be monetizable versus uh, should the focus be more on engagement and drive uh, that so so i think there's a fine balance and uh, understanding that is critical uh, and also say if you're on e-commerce you're looking at uh, very different uh, aspects of pricing and stuff right so i think uh, it depends on how deep uh, you are engaged how how much of the capability in the product is to, driven towards that uh, but monetization rather than pricing is what i would say is the uh, theme and uh, how do you eventually monetize the product that you built is probably something that you need to have uh, skills around sir so i think i would agree with manjunath on that uh, but uh, what i think more on the product lines is ki i think monetization comes uh, much later in a startup journey and i think you don't have to worry too much about it at a very early stage when starting with product management i think first uh, thing which you need to nail is actually the product finding the right customer needs and making something out of it and actually trying to figure that you know problem solution space i think that's the most important part of it once you have that in place once you get that product which solves a real customer need and people love it i think monetization is always a by product you can always monetize in 10 different ways even if you don't want to charge customers you can always have advertisements uh, if people are regularly coming to your platform and there is a huge audience for it you can always go the facebook way so i think uh what i think monetization can always come later it can be always taken care of the first thing is uh the first and foremost thing in the startup is to get the product right 
Okay. Anyone else would like to yeah, add me? Yeah, I also have a take. Uh, directly addressing the question about pricing, I think it's a very um, like useful PM skill to have in particular domains. Um, so the domains that really jump out to me, and the three that jump out to me right now are, um, as a SaaS product manager, uh, one would probably want to know pricing uh, as to how to price their enterprise plan, for example. Um, e-commerce, although I'm not very familiar with the space in general, I know that pricing in e-commerce uh, can be very important. Uh, and finally, uh, the space that I'm actually most familiar with is um, ad tech. Um, in particular, Facebook is primarily an ads monetization company, and the way that we price uh, ad impressions as just Google is um, incredibly important for the, uh, like, yeah, the, the <laughs> solvency of the business, uh, so to speak, and, and efficiently pricing um, like these ads to real-time auctions is what we work on. Um, I think it is a very domain-specific skill, though, so there are a number of product managers you can get through their entire career, um, even within these sort of verticals, I'd say, um, without really having like a deep knowledge on pricing. So uh, it's Great. not necessary, I'd say. Great. I think we are just uh, at the end of time now. Uh, I hope the, uh, the uh, Really, I still continues. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Vinit, can you share the results of the poll, please? Uh, all right, so uh, oh, it's right up here. Uh, do you see yourself as a product manager? Yes, 82%, maybe 11%, uh, only 8% said no. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear panelists. I think you have done a great job in inspiring. Uh, I'd like to leave everybody the uh, closing remarks that uh, there is a Slack community. Uh, NASCOM products will share uh, the link to the Slack community, which you can join and be a part of and be networked and plugged in. Um, there's also future skills as well. I, I think you should get to know about that too. And uh, uh, at the least, you should follow hashtag India Productified. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, panelists. Thank you, students, viewers. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.